girl. This might not be. This could be a guy. Um, just talking to <laughs> Kelly now. Kelly on the phone. What's up? Well, I think it's going to become pretty evident yeah, uh, as far go. as the gender uh, part goes. Well, that, <laughs> hey, if, Kelly, you how you doing? if you identify some <laughs> hey, other way, how are you guys? I'll call you whatever you like. But yeah, how's it going, Kelly? Uh, no, I, I I believe there's only two, and I'm the guy version. Ooh, yeah. okay. Well. Yeah, okay. We well, could talk about politics. Politics is boring. They talk about that too much anyway. Well, we could talk um, about that, but you did call in about something else here. This was the. I did. Yeah. Yes. What's up? Actually, I was listening to the last conversation, and it was uh, sort of interesting. I I uh, would disagree with uh, with the last caller. I can't remember his name right now. I think Jason was that. Is that it? Yes. Jason? Yes. Um, so yeah, I I would disagree with him on some points, but overall, I I thought it was a pretty good conversation. You guys, uh, what I liked about it is it stayed calm. Mm-hmm. I've been on different broadcasts with different people, and things tend to get agitated. Yes, when I you agree. Start talking about the Bible, so I, I appreciate you guys to keep it calm. That's cool. Yeah, for sure. This is definitely. I don't try to make this a debate platform, so um, I'm glad. Yeah, Conversation yeah, I, is is a lost art for sure. In for our sure, society it, it gets to the point of screaming That's at each other and. Right. Nothing. Yeah, nothing gets uh, gets communicated at that point. I absolutely agree. So, Kelly, tell me about what you wanted to talk about today. Okay, sure. Um, well, what I was uh, what I was listening to a couple things I wanted to just respond to as far as the last conversation goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't I don't foresee that the fact that uh, Gil, Epic of Gilgamesh was before Noah's, or excuse me, Noah. I <laughs> get those confused. Moses's account. Uh, Moses's account is obviously a historical reference. He didn't live through it. Moses appears on the scene in Exodus. Mm. So the fact that Moses's account may have been later than the Epic of Gilgamesh really doesn't make it any less true. In fact, the more accounts you have, which there's Chinese accounts as well, of the flood just makes it so that if the flood really did happen, then you would expect almost every society to have some sort of tale over it. Is it going to be exactly the same? No, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's very similar. And I think that's what you see. So um, that's something that I heard was brought up and I, I didn't really feel like that was responded to real well. So um, yeah, the Epic of Gilgamesh was definitely before Moses's account. I can definitely think of a response. That really doesn't, I, I'm sure Neil could yeah, too, but I, I know that you probably wanted to call in about something else as well, right? Well, that was just something that came up. But, okay. Um, um, let me tell you why I believe there is a God. Okay. And I think it's pretty obvious that there has to be. Um, basically three things I, I, I pronounce that declare the fact that there's, if you guys don't like God, let's call him designer. <laughs> uh, the, the physics principle of cause and effect, information in DNA, and the anthropic principle. Mm. All those things point to you, know, you guys don't want to call him a god, say designer, creator, uh, uncaused, first cause, mm-hmm. however you want to term it. If you don't like the word god, then replace it with something else. Well, um, I want to talk about what you I believe. Think, if you believe it is a Christian sure. god, then let's go Let's go with that. I do. That's I'm a Christian, and that's mm-hmm. what I believe. But okay. I, um, a lot of times, as I said, as soon as I bring something up like that, it gets tense. Mm-hmm. So I try to keep it untense, at least for a little while. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I do believe those are those are things that are that are quite obvious, and I think um, that's the probability of it. I tell atheists that I talk to all the time. You know, I'm, I I deal with probability. If you want to deal with possibility, okay, that's that's up to you. But I like to keep my keep my um, my belief system based on probability. Okay. Well, okay. Let me ask Is you. Is it possible kind of- that there's multi universes? I guess. Let me, but honestly, yeah. guys, that's a faith position. Mm, okay. Multiverse uh, theory is a faith position. Do you believe your know of? Do you believe uh, this one? Your position is a faith position as well. Um, when it comes to God's existence, no. Mm, okay, so multi- multiverse is a faith-based position. What What do you mean by the word faith? By the way, let's let's define that. Well, there's no there's no def- there's no evidence for it. Okay, but you do Multiverse believe there. Theory has no evidence. It's just a, it's just an excuse for the anthropic principle. Okay, but you do believe that there the is evidence up with. evidence for the Christian God. That's kind of your belief. I, I do, yes. Okay, and I, I I go from it from the starting point of uh, designer, and I usually trail from there into which one's the most likely. Mm. You and think that- I think once you examine the ones that are spoken of. I think the Christian God becomes the most likely. The Christian God becomes the most likely out of other conceptions of God. Yes. 
Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. Either, well, let me say conceptions. Let me say descriptions. Descriptions. Okay. That's right. fair. Um, gosh, I know. I, I, I feel like I've been hog- I know what I would ask next, Neil. Can I ask? Go. Him, can I go next, or, or do you want? I, do you I want to talk about Neil? Yeah. Okay. Well, so I, I guess my first question is like, because I've definitely heard the anthropics principle stuff. I've heard the DNA stuff, the des- the whole okay. design stuff before. That stuff's not new to me. I am interested in how you came to the conclusion that the Christian God is the best fit description out of all the other concepts of God. Well, hold on. You're kind of you're kind of leaping. You're kind of doing a leapfrog there. And and this is I'm sorry. I, this is the first time I've been in. This is Dan, right? Yes. Okay. So you kind of leapfrog that, Dan. What do you mean? That's something that you have yeah. to have answers for. If you're gonna, if you're going to promote the atheist position, then you have to give me some answers for those. Well, things. I'm not promoting any position. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly trying to figure out how you figured out that it was a Christian god. Like I, that's. Just I don't know. I, I think you are promoting a position of atheism, but if you want to skip over that, you know, that's your show. So I, <laughs> well, I can't make you answer it. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't know how I promoted atheism in this conversation so far. I think I've just been asking you questions, Kelly, but, you know. Well, uh, I, the show is Neil the 604 Atheist, right? No, that is that is my guest, no, Neil the 604 Atheist. The show is called oh, Truth okay. Wanted. All right. This, like I yes. said, this is the first time I've been on, so I'm yes. kind of learning as I go here. Yes. As far as you guys go. Yeah. yeah so I don't, I don't specifically endorse this show as an atheist show, I've had Christians as last week, my guest host was Christian, um, yeah. although this is on the Atheist Experience Network, um, so okay, it's, it's run by a bunch of atheists, but I, I don't ex- exclusively okay. make this like an atheist show necessarily. Yeah, you can talk okay. about anything you believe. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be with the religion. Right. Sure. I am, I am an atheist, and I do run the show, okay. but, you know, it's that was one my of, next. That was my next question. Yeah. So. so do you have answers for those, or are you still kind of impending status on that? Well, I'm—, I'm I I think you I think you you you're misconstruing what this show is about. Again, this isn't me de- trying to defend positions necessarily. I'm I'm more asking you questions about how you came to your belief. Um, okay. So I I'd love That's to talk. Enough. I'd love to talk more about wh- how you came to the conclusion. Because uh, I think a lot of people have heard a lot of the stuff you talked about before, and I'm definitely interested in the in the specifically Christian God part. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. That's fine. Um, uh, well, I wasn't uh, I wasn't a Christian until I was 43 years old, so mm-hmm. um, it, it took a while for me. And I wouldn't say I was an atheist before that. I just like to drink and party. But um, once I once it came to the point where I um, had a situation that wanted to that I needed to know if there was a God, I had lots of questions. Mm-hmm. So I went through college. They taught me the evolutionary diatribe. They taught me all that stuff, and like I said, I just wanted to drink a party, so I don't really care that much. But, you know, they had a bunch of letters next to their names, so I figured, okay, well, they know what they're talking about, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But once I started considering whether or not there was a God or not, and in particular the Christian one, then I came to the conclusion, well, okay, these two stories of origins, you know, they can't both be true. Neither one of them could be true. That could be. But if they're opposite accounts, then they can't both be true. That violates the law of non-contradiction. So either both are, neither of them are true or one of the others true, but they both can't be true. So that's my, that was kind of like my jumping off point, which, which one of these makes the most sense, right? Which one of them has evidence, which one, you know, all down the line. Mm-hmm. So um, like I said, I, I'm aware of Darwin's theory. I understand what he, what he observed, and you guys would be surprised to hear that what Darwin actually saw, I agree with. I mean, that doesn't Darwin surprise me. Saw, I agree with. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I was when I was a Christian, I believed in. Right now. I believed in evolution myself, so that it doesn't surprise me at all. Well, right. I, okay, so that's yeah. that's a broad term that you just said. Mm, okay, so that's so you would you would term. define it as as like macro well, versus micro? Or? I mean, you guys you guys know what Darwin saw, right? He saw finch beaks getting longer and lizards eating in the ocean instead of on land. Yes. He saw those type of things and that type of stuff, sure. Okay. I mean, the beak's there. The fact that it gets bigger and smaller, you know, that's like our noses. They get bigger and smaller, not for the same reason, but they do. Do you believe that? So I don't really foresee that to be something that would explain, for example, what they're trying to explain with it now, the diversification of life or the origin of life. It doesn't have an explanation for that. Not what Darwin saw. No. All he's seeing is just the, the, the fact that the animal has adaptability, and I agree. Mm-hmm. Of course they do. Okay. It's obvious. So that part, we don't have any argument over. Uh-huh. It's just what has been 
perceived from there. Okay. That's where the argument would, but let's not go down that trail because that gets into some boring detail. I mean, I can, I can go there if you want to, but it gets into... I don't find it boring. Well, I, I'm, I'm okay. just interested. I, really, I'm, I'm still wondering with my first question, okay. which was just... Still wondering how I got the there. Three, okay. You have I your have three principles and then the Christian continue. God as opposed to all right. the other gods. I, I'm just okay. really interested in knowing why the Christian God specifically. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, the, as far as the, I don't know what you call it, research, I guess. Mm-hmm. As far as the research goes, it, it came from the fact that, you know, first of all, I had to figure out whether there actually was one. You know, does it, does it make any sense to think there is one? And I, I believe that that's, I mean, you guys would say that I'm over-exaggerating, but I, I think it's ironclad. How could it not be? Once you come to that point, then you start to get to start looking at which one makes wait, wait, sense. Wait, 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 I'm still confused. How did you mm-hmm. con- conclude that there was a God versus a bunch of gods or, or many? Okay, you're, you're, you're saying God again, and, and that you know, denotes me saying that I, I discovered the Christian God at that point. That's not the case. I'm just saying there has to be an uncaused first cause. Okay, but that's that's different from God, though, right? Like an point uncaused, well, that could be right, something else, I right? I agree with you. That's the reason why I keep saying designer, creator, instead right. of God, because, you know, that denotes a particular one. I'll get to that. Okay. I, I just, I want to get to the I'm just particulars, saying, once man. I observed the fact that it was, it was obvious that there is an uncaused first cause, you, you, I mean, when you live inside the time domain, you can't have an unending number of events. Why not? It's just silly. Infinity yeah. does not exist inside the time frame, guys. Why not? It doesn't. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, you, why not? Why? You had a start to the universe. We agree, don't we? I think the Big Bang... Every cosmologist you want to talk about has a start to the universe. I think the Big Bang describes a start to how the motions of the universe and things like that, but... You're you're arguing with Hawking's and and Penrose and a bunch of other guys if you don't think there was a start. But we can't see past that, so we don't know if anything was before that. Right, exactly. Well, that's a faith position now, guys. I'm going with what we can see and what we can determine. Well, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Hold this on. Universe had a start. Now, if you want to propose other universes, well, hang on. Neil that's never a faith said. Position. And like I said, I deal with probability, not possibility. Neil has not said anything that that is faith based. He's saying based on the same observations as Hawking's and everybody else. The multiverse. What I'm saying is the multiverse theory is a faith position. Right, but we we haven't even discussed no the multiverse yet. We're, we're no, not even talking about it. That's just one of the idea. things that brings up, that comes up. Okay, I understand but we that's know an idea. This that... universe had a beginning. Yeah, and the Thomas Aquinas well, statement in the 12th century is still valid. Anything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe had a cause. Yes, that's cause the, and effect. It's Kalam? here. It had a start. Therefore, it had a starter. I'm aware of the Kalam cosmological argument. Yes, okay. that is the. It is Kalam. Actually, it's uh, kind of up in the air whether Aquinas or Kalam came up with it. I, I'm kind of leaning towards Kalam, but it doesn't really matter. It, it was said. Sure, but I'm still wondering how you know it's a Christian God. Mm-hmm. I, um, I still okay. haven't heard so the answer. If you want to g- jump past the rest of it, I, and I, I, I get it. Yeah. I, I usually get that jump past by you guys, but yeah. that's okay. Um, so really? at that point, when you start you start determining which one's which, well, let me give you a, uh, an example. Um, the Hindu god describes the earth resting on the back of turtles. Mm-hmm. I, I, I believe we know that's not right now. <laughs> mm. On the other hand, wait, how do, says well, he, hold on, he wait, 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 whoa, slow, slow your roll, hold on. I don't. Why don't we know that the universe started on the back of turtles? Well, do you believe we had a moonshot? A moonshot? Those guys were out there. They didn't see any turtles. Well, I have. They haven't seen the Christian God yet either. So I'm wondering. I mean, you still well, have they, not. They I, I don't. I don't know what's going on Christian here because God is an extra dimensional. What Christian if it's God a God that we don't being. know? Why would they see him. What if it's a God that we just don't know about? Maybe he's just kind of out there, but we just don't know anything about him. I mean, is yeah. that not possible? Again, again, I, I deal with probability, not possibility. But, okay, so you asked me why I came to that one, and yes. that's one of the reasons why I read that. And uh, Earth resting on the back of turtles made no sense to me. On the other hand, when it says in Isaiah chapter 40 that God hangs the earth on nothing, that's exactly what we see. It's hanging on nothing. Mm. Now, I understand Newton's laws of physics, all the rest of it. I get it. But when you, when you observe it, it is hanging on nothing. You can't see it. It appears to be, sure. So that's a good description. As well, 
as over and over again, the Bible talks about okay. the, earth, the universe being expanding, stretching mm, okay. out to heaven. So, so let, me, let, me, let me put two and two together. Those are the things that you asked me, so let me finish. Okay, sure. Those are some of the things that caused me to believe that this is the right one. Okay. The fact that okay, it says in Genesis, it says they come after their kind. That's exactly what we see. Dogs mm. mate, and they have dogs. Cats mates, they have cats. Okay. We don't ever see anything any different, and that's exactly what we see. Okay. Well, so okay. So those are the, some of the reasons that the the prophecy that's in the Bible over and over again. Okay. The documentation, extra biblical documentation of events such as Tacitus talking about Christ being crucified. The historical events of the past. I mean, there's mm-hmm. there's documentation for David. There's talking documentation for Yehu, one of the kings that are mentioned in Kings. Mm-hmm. There's documentation. I mean, when they talk about talk about civilizations, they're there. They talked about the Egyptian captivity. The okay, Egyptians so were there. Let me, let me, the let me, Assyrians were there. The, let me, uh, the, the summarize the it up a little bit. were there. Okay. So those are, those are all reasons why the book is talking about historical events. So Okay, so the Bible says, right. I'm trying to understand how you got to Christian God, and, and what I'm hearing is the Bible is describing other true things, for example, the earth hanging on nothing and maybe some other historical right. events Therefore, the creator of the universe is the Christian God. Well, if you're going to look at the ones that are around and see what they have to say, then it's it shouldn't shouldn't it be if this God does know everything and He created everything, shouldn't He have an accurate example? But an isn't it description of history? And isn't it, it and possible that I could have a book that describes things about history? Uh, that also has a belief about God, or at least talks about a God. And those things about history could be true, but the God stuff could not be true. I sure, but I don't know okay. what that, why that would make a point well, on what I was talking about. Because how does that con- lead us to conclude that creator of the universe was God? I mean, I could find you mm-hmm. some secular sources, um, some other, some pagan sources about history that could really tell us some mm-hmm. accurate events. Mm-hmm. But maybe they're pagan God beliefs. I mean, do we have to accept that these pagan God beliefs are true because these pagan well, sources are talking about true they, historical if, events or true? If they had accurate, of- if they had accurate descriptions of all of it, then you might have a point. But the, mm-hmm. the hypothetical thing you're bringing up right now isn't a valid point. It's hypothetical because you don't have it. I don't have it. Produce it. No, it, you need to know. produce it. Tell me what it is. I mean, I I have no doubt that I could probably find some books from history that tell true things. Like, do you agree with me that that course, is a sure. thing that okay? And do you of agree that you those but there that is a book out that there that describes true things about history that also describes a God belief that is in Christianity? Sure. Do, do I course, have to? Lots of them. Okay. But well, that doesn't, but that doesn't mean the Bible isn't true. But that doesn't mean I, the Bible isn't. True. I agree with you. It doesn't mean that the Bible isn't true. But it also uh-huh. doesn't mean that the Bible is correct and, and on their all descriptions, things. The descriptions, the descriptions of God don't don't come out right. They don't they don't align with what we see. The it, guy that was on the last that the, the was before me, mm-hmm. he 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 proved it. he showed it to you about time, space, matter, and energy. I I think the that's book all, of Genesis that's all document the, the Genesis was right from the beginning. <laughs> it, Aristotle uh, came around in 300 BC and said the universe has always been here, static state. Yeah, would well, you guys still believe that? It sounds like you do, maybe, but that was disproven. I don't. I Hubble looked through his telescope, saw that everything was expanding. Einstein and Hoyle and a few other guys didn't like it, but they came to the conclusion that he was right. And then in 1970, Hawking and Penrose said that time, space, matter, and energy all had a beginning. Okay. But, Moses had him beat by 3,500 years. Well, Kelly, I, 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 I want you to convince ago, me. And it's right. I want you to convince right. me that, that you're true. I, like, if you're right, I want to know that you're right. I definitely want to know well, that for I, sure. I'm not right. I'm not right because I'm just a fallible human being, but God's right. Yes, but in, in, in the sense that your beliefs you. are correct, that your beliefs are well, true. I, I, go by, I go by, again, cause and effect. Yes. I, there is not an unending number of events in the universe. I, I think you should come to that conclusion because it's true. There isn't. There isn't. There's a start. Well, how do you know start. it's un- not? Well, that's a, actually side point here. How do you know that it's not unending? Well, it's inside time, Dan. Isn't that a faith thing, it's though? Inside time. Time is a limiting event. We started. I got on the phone to to get on this conversation thirty minutes ago. 
Right, but uh, time's like, running, if, and it's always been running. You made this kind of characterization between like faith-based well, no, things I, I and like know. science. I guess you need to read some cosmology, guys, because <laughs> time had a start. Kelly, I've read That's some cosmology. Talking and Penrose said it. I like. I'd like to be cordial with you, please. I, I'm having a good okay. conversation so far. I, I me too, but well, I just you know there's there's some stuff that's that's not penetrating, and I just because we, if you guys, well, Kelly, know, you may not believe, but I'm just saying. I I've this heard is not this stuff made up stuff like what Kelly, you were trying to. Please, please let me talk. Please, it's please. Okay, go. I, I, there is, a, there is zero things you have told me so far that is new information to me. Mm-hmm. A lot of what you've been saying so far is stuff that we've heard from other Christians oh, I'm sure in our conversations about Penrose, about the uncaused cause, the Kalam, about mm-hmm. historical events, of the Bible, the di- I mean, you name okay. it. Everything you've said so well, far is stuff that I've heard before. Sure. But I, yeah, I'm still not a Christian after hearing yeah. all of that. I, I understand that. But you're not a, you, the reason why you're not a Christian isn't due to evidence. The reason why you're a Christian is because of your heart. Mm. Not a Christian is because of your heart. So you not know my heart evidence. better than I, I do, can huh? Give you, I can give you all the evidence that you need. I already have. Mm. At least some of it. I haven't even got to most of it. I can give you all the evidence I need to get. And the probability is that God exists. Mm. If you don't want to admit to it, okay, that's up to you. But what about our hearts? Every is, atheist is, that is, I talk to, are you referring to like every what do you atheist mean? I talk to when I start didn't get to it this time, but the evidence is all against you. Mm. All of it. Okay, There's Kelly. You you clear you know me better than I do. Clearly, you you no an evidence. There is no evidence absolutely. pointing towards. All right, nobody. I'm gonna put you on hold because I'm tired of talking over you, and this is my show, and I can do that. I normally don't do that, but. Uh, I'm really, I'm not appreciating the dialogue we're having here. I don't think it's constructive. You can continue to talk to me without making judgments about where I'm at in my life right now, the conclusions I've come to, or saying that I'm rejecting evidence because there's something wrong with my heart, okay? That's abusive, what you're telling me right now. And I'm not going to stand for that. I've known too many people in my life who have heard this kind of rhetoric that are hurt because of this and who have super, (laughs) super, super awful, awful feelings of guilt and anxiety because they're trying to believe something that they don't believe anymore. And this pressure you're trying to put on me right now, it's not going to fly and I'm not going to allow it on my show. So we can keep talking about this, but I'm not going to accept these kinds of judgments. Okay. So Kelly, you're back on the air right now. Okay. I'll give it to you. Okay. So, Let's talk about this. Let's go back just a little bit. We can talk all day about the uncaused causes and things like that. I, I, you know, there may or may not be merit to those kinds of conversations. I'm still interested in knowing the conclusion of the Christian God in that he is the source of all cause, essentially. Let's, let's just assume that this is true of what you're talking about, that there is an uncaused cause and that all the things in the universe are happening this way. What I heard from you, and maybe you can correct me if this is wrong, but you know this is true because the Bible says some things that are true. We can look at the Bible and it says some other things that are true. And it also talks about God. So therefore, its truths about God are also true. And that's where you're kind of losing me a little bit. I don't know how the Bible describing other things as being true leads us to conclude that the God that it's talking about is also real or true. Well, uh, I don't think I really went down that road. You okay. said you wanted to know why it is that I believed in the Christian God. Yes. I started off by saying stuff that didn't really address that. And you wanted me to go there, so I went there. Mm-hmm. What, I, what I start with, and I start with on um, lots of shows that I'm on, mm-hmm. is the fact that God exists. And I don't go down the road for the Christian God for a little while. You didn't I know, hear and, that and part of it, so I changed. But that's the thing, Kelly. Every every time I hear people talk anything. about the Kalam, that's the thing. They always start with the uncaused cause, and they always start with the designer. They don't start with the Christian God. And I think that's a problem. I think if you're starting off with this other thing and then bringing in this other thing, these two things might not be actually as related. And that's why I'm starting with the Christian God, because... I, I haven't heard anybody who has talked about the Kalam cosmological argument bring me a, a convincing argument to convince me why I should believe that it's the Christian God that we're talking about. Mm. Well, that wasn't my argument, but okay. That, that wasn't my argument. I brought that up to the fact that there is one. There's an uncaused first cause. That doesn't designate which one. 
I know, but I want to know how you know because you are convinced that you know which you're one. Going, you're going back to the same one. You you just said you wanted to get away from that that discussion, and now you're going back there again. But you tell me where you want to go, and that's where I'll go. But if you want to go there then I'm going to tell you what I believe. I, I want to know how you know that the Christian God is the uncaused cause that you're talking about. Okay. Well, it's the only one that's described that way. The only one that says in the beginning, de designating that God as an as a extra dimensional being, another way to describe it, because that's what he is. He's an extra dimensional being. He started our dimensions that we live in, the four of them, but, including okay. space, including Do you time. know that because of he the Bible, them. though? Yeah, because it says so in the first chapter. Yeah, but so how do we know that the Bible is telling us true things? That's the thing. That's uh, we we well, have. We know we know from 1970 when Hawking and Penrose said that's what is going to happen. They're neither of them okay. Christian. So now we're they using science as a tool to confirm whether or not the things yeah, in the Bible what I are do. true. That's that's okay. the reason why I came on here was okay. to do that. Okay. And let me finish if I can. Yeah. Hawking mm -hmm. and Penrose said in 1970, time, space, matter, and energy had a beginning. Okay. But, that's those guys, and they're not Christian. Mm -hmm. They're just saying that's what that's what they observe. But how come they didn't come the to the conclusion that it was the Christian the God? Is ex yeah, because they're well, because they they didn't intend to. All they're trying to find out is whether there is one. But wouldn't 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 the out, people who are researching the origins of the one. universe wouldn't they want to know the actual origins? How come they didn't go that I far? I doubt it. Not really. No, <laughs> they're not. Oh, Some of them do. There's, there's cosmologists that are Christian. There's lots of them. Sure. Matter of fact, as far as you poll for scientists, there's more scientists that believe but God why exists aren't, than don't. Why aren't all cosmologists Christian? Mm -hmm. If this is what well, the evidence points to. Why, same, same reason why that not all theists are Christian. They have their own, they have their own mindset that they want to follow. And... That's not, that's not an evidence against the Christian gods is because not everybody believes in them. They have free choice. They have it. They, they can make that choice if they want to. So it's a choice to... I, I'm kind of confused because, you know, like, clim like climate scientists, like most of them agree global warming is a thing, for example. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of... I mean, most biologists agree evolution is a thing, for example. Why don't most... Why is it that when it comes to the God belief, it's a harden of the heart situation? Why... You know, because I, I mean, people have hardened their hearts in the past to these other things too. But eventually, the evidence runs out, and people kind of accept it over time. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not seeing again. I, I don't think evidence has anything to do with it with you guys with atheists. I'm not saying you guys, but atheists. I don't think evidence has anything to do with it. So you think it's just uh, like something wrong with us personally? We're making some sort of I, personal choices that I'm not going to go down that road because you okay. guys get upset when I do. So I'm not going to go down that road. Sure, but that is your belief. I'm just confirming that. If you want me to go down the road, I will. I just want you to confirm like yes that, or no so that it's it's the result of a character flaw, basically. Uh, no, that was your words. I never said that. Okay. Well, some something. It's some, a decision. I have a, a problem where I can't accept evidence. Not basically. involved with evidence. That's, that's what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. It's a decision that people make that isn't an evidential one. Mm, okay. If you actually reviewed the evidence, it's obvious there's a God, uh, a creator, a first uncaused first cause. It's inside time, man. You got to have a start to time. Okay. It's obvious it started. It's going to end. Yeah. Time is is, a, is yeah. a limited event. There's no such thing as infinity inside time. Okay. If there's infinity inside time. Please tell me where the half point was. Okay. Well, I think where was the half point if there's infinity? Yeah, man. I don't know. Yeah, you, 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 you won me either because there isn't infinity inside time. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> Infinity that's, wouldn't have a half. Point. That's fine, Kelly. Uh, I appreciate the call. Uh, thanks for talking to me. And uh, if you want to talk to me again, you're free to call in anytime. I, I've got the number. If you guys like to talk, I'd be happy. Is it just Fridays? The Fridays so at you seven. Guys have the discussion. Fridays at seven, hey. live every week. Okay. Hey, look, I, I really appreciate you guys letting me on. I really appreciate you, and mm -hmm. I appreciate the conversation stayed pretty calm <laughs> mm -hmm. a couple of spots mm -hmm. and thanks for letting me on i really do appreciate it and lastly i have a joke for you guys all right i've, I've made i've made a notion and hopefully it gets published i want to make a day for you guys a day at the national atheist day and it's april 1st april 1st yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's very fun uh, just a joke guys just kidding okay
Well, hey, it was good talking with you guys, and I really mean what I say. I appreciate the show, and thanks for letting me come on. All right. You have a great day, Kelly. All right. You too. Bye. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, um, I don't say Christians are stupid or that they – or that there there's something wrong with them internally why they can't get to where they're at. I I don't I don't make those kinds of assertions. And that's not what Kelly is saying necessarily. I know that he has a a theological background and that that's the Bible is kind of explaining these kinds of things I guess as why people are rejecting the belief, specifically the passage in Romans and whatnot. Um mm. but it's interesting that some beliefs we can accept from evidence as atheists, but there's some that we just can't really get to. And it's because of our hearts and our hearts have been kind of hardened. I don't know, Neil, what do you think? Well, I, I, I don't know how our hearts harden, mm -hmm. so to speak, unless there's something seriously wrong with them. Yeah. Um, I think the reason I stopped believing was because of evidence in the, to the contrary of what I had read mm -hmm. and studied my whole life, right? I think so, too. You know, I, I don't know about you. It wasn't an easy decision for me to leave my Christian community. No. In fact, no. I did it with much bemoaning and much sadness. Um, it well, because it's comforting and you want to cling on. You want to stay with it, right? Cause yeah. It answers questions that we, well, it answers questions mm -hmm. that we don't really have an answer to for. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Is there an afterlife? Well, the book says there is, so, okay, good, I feel better about that. But that's just, it's it's like placating it or something. It's not, we don't know, and you're not going to know until, and even then, you probably won't know. Yeah. And look, if, if I, I mean, I, I'm not convinced of the arguments either that, oh, it's just obvious that it's the Christian God because yeah, I'd like the, to see the, what's the book that the book that says this belief is true is telling you that this belief is true. You know what I mean? Like we don't know that the book is true yet. I don't think that we 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 really got that far. It kind of got in a bit of a circle there. Um, a and, bit, yeah. and I I don't like hearing the language of well, it's it's your fault for some reason internally. I think that's uh, I, you know that I have to put a stop to that kind of thing because one, I don't like personal attacks, and I don't think Kelly and. I don't think he means for it to be a personal attack because I think you start to say that so many times, you don't realize the kind of harm that does to people either. That's true. Um, and yeah, I, was, I was right with you there. Yeah, and I, I don't mean to 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 be that way on the show, but I, I have to put a hard limit on some of this stuff, you know, because... I can't uh, remember the last time you put someone on hold, to be honest. Uh, it's been a while, you know, uh, not since the, not since the pre-shows that we were doing, I think. Uh, yeah, I can I can have conversations with Christians and and none of them can tell me there's something wrong with my heart in the same way that I don't tell them something's wrong with their brain. You know, I don't <laughs> that, to me, that's just uh, I, I don't think that that's true. First of all, for most things, I think that there's this misconception, especially among some of the stronger um, anti theist types in the community. Of course, I'm not talking about all anti-theists, but I, I do see this rhetoric sometimes of, oh, there is some sort of mental thing that's wrong with people, and that's why they're not atheists. And I think that that's totally just not true at all. No. Um, I think that that's just a misnomer and, and, and a mischaracterization. I don't think that people are including all the sociological and, and geographic and all kinds of factors that play into our beliefs and, sure. and why we hold them and stuff. But uh, sorry, I didn't let you talk a whole lot there either, Neil. I wish I could have <laughs> done that a bit more. Well, I mean, I mean, obviously, a lot of us, for, for, for well, I'm not going to say a lot of us, say anyone that ha holds beliefs mm -hmm. like that, it, it's obviously where you're born has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Uh, like, like me being in a unique case where being born to a Christian family, yet being raised Jewish, albeit both are of the Abrahamic belief systems. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, your upbringing, I think, is a better way to look at it. It's like how you were raised rather than where you were born so much. But I think the odds that if you're not born in an area that is predominantly one of the Abrahamic faiths, you're going to be uh, a believer in multiple gods, in like Hinduism or um, a different versions of Hinduism where they do have that 
one god, I believe, that they're monotheists. But um, it's a little different, right? It just depends on you know how you were raised. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, you know, we could talk about this all day for sure about like oh, how shit, people yeah. come to these beliefs and like what are the, uh, you know, scientific explanations basically for 